One of the most common suggestions to make a video about, and one of the most common questions on Q&As that I get, is what is the most horrific case I've ever heard of? It's a case that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of by now. The Junko sure Futura case. That's her. Is that hair? Some detail. Chat, is that hair? In complete detail? This is the story of Junko Furuta. Widely considered Why does he sound? The okay. Worst crimes ever committed in okay, history. fuck all that. So for the love of God, please don't watch this if you're sensitive to extreme violence, uh, especially of the sexual variety. Trust me. Junko Furuta was a young woman who was born in Misato in the Saitama prefecture of Japan. Okay. Her family consisted of a mother, father, an older brother, and a younger brother. She For the Japanese crime rate to be so low, I am surprised that 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 this is that this happened in Japan. In I'm, I'm surprised that this happened in Japan, like China, okay, um, any other Asian country except for Japan or Korea. I will understand, but Japan. She time at a plastic molding factory after school. Okay. She was saving up for a big oh, yeah, cancer trip. Things. She was planning. She was all set up to start working at an electronics store after she graduated. She was fairly popular and well-liked by her classmates. She had great grades and was hardly ever absent. She uh -huh. was active, attractive, and attracted a uh -huh. lot of attention, which made uh, some people all jealous. Right. All right. One thing about Japan and its culture, them niggas be creeps. C-R-E-E-P-S with the capital C. Yes. And exclamation marks, they're creeps. Smoke and definitely never touched any drugs. Okay. This made her seem very lame in the eyes of the thugs around the school. The Yakuza the thugs. Wannabes. One of the boys in this group was named Hiroshi Miyano. He actually developed a bit of a crush on her and wanted to get physical with her. He proposed this and she refused. Hiroshi was a pretty big bully in this school, one of the only ones actually involved with the younger members of the Yakuza at the time. Usually, nobody dared defy him. He couldn't believe that Junko actually had the gall to turn him down. Uh-huh. Hiroshi did not take this well at all. He couldn't believe that anyone would ever reject him. He took it as a complete and total insult. Uh huh. He got together with a few of his wives. This is why. I, this is why I firmly believe that women cannot just say no. If bro, like, like the other day, this this um girl rejected this dude, and she got kidnapped and killed, bro. I, this is why I firmly believe that women cannot just say no. If they're gonna say no, they need something to protect them. They need. They do. Buddies, Fuck a pepper the spray. They need a knife. They need a knife or a gun. They would get another one of their friends to attack Junko, and then Hiroshi would come to the rescue. After he won a bit of her trust, they could take her wherever they wanted. On November 25th of 1988, Junko was riding her bike home from her part-time job when an unknown boy attacked her and knocked her off of her bike. The boy who liked her, Hiroshi Miyano was conveniently across the street while the whole thing happened. He came to Junko's aid and scared off the random boy. Okay. He then offered to escort her home. Escort her home! Everything seemed to be going as planned. While Junko didn't actually trust him, it seemed better than the alternative of possibly being attacked again. She didn't have any idea that Hiroshi harbored any sort of hatred towards her. She wouldn't have imagined that he would be planning anything like this. this. Hiroshi took Junko into an abandoned warehouse and revealed his Yakuza connections to her. He then took his time raping her over a... Put that nigga in prison. Over. Then he took her to a hotel. In the hotel, he called his friends, Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe. From then on, he and his three friends took turns assaulting her. Unfortunately, this was not their first time doing this. This is not... As they had just recently done it to another girl in the past few weeks. 
they decided that they were having far too much fun to just send They were having away. fun? There was also the possibility that she would call the cops and they, tell them- Bro, don't say that, don't say that. They were having fun! What happened and they couldn't have that. They killed her because bro- Boy! Does she have- I hope she have brothers. The next morning- I hope she Hiroshi have brothers. Jun go to a nearby park where Joe, Yasushi, and a fourth boy- Nobu Oh shit! Hey guys, Rent JPG here. Did you know that 85% of you guys aren't subscribed? What are you doing right now? Click that button and don't miss out on two to three videos a week. Let's get back into the video. My daughter is. My daughter will always have protection on her. This is why I firmly believe that a woman should always have protection on them, bro. I firmly believe that, bro. I, I, bro, I, I promise to you. I'm gonna get my daughter a knife or something, and when she's old enough, I'm gonna teach her how to use a gun. I'm not letting something like that happen to my daughter. No, 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 bro. Like if my bro, if a woman says no, it's no, it's no, bro. Just take it to the chin. If you can't handle rejection, then you a bitch. You have estrogen in your body, like <laughs> you a bitch. Telling her that they would kill her entire family if she tried to get away. The four teenage boys then took her back to Minato's parents' home, where they continued to assault her. This is where, for 42 more days, she would be held prisoner. On the third day that Junko was missing, her parents were dealing with the police, trying okay. to get her found. Knowing this would happen, the captors made her call her parents and tell them that she had run away and was staying with a friend, safe and sound. She was forced to ask her mom to stop the investigation. They held Junko captive in the bedroom, okay. forcing her to No first world country would just stop the investigation. Isn't that suspicious? Isn't that suspicious, Japan police force? Suppose as Isn't that suspicious? <laughs> it didn't take long for the parents to realize that this was a lie. Eventually, they dropped the whole girlfriend act altogether, as it was very clear that they weren't going to get in any trouble. Immediately after arriving, and the parents at the home, didn't the boys do forced shit. Junko into becoming their toy. They beat her relentlessly and raped her countless times a day, often taking turns. They were proud of what they were doing, regularly boasting to their friends that they had a woman trapped and ready for their personal use. They invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her. In the first few days, at least 30 of them raped her, and oh! at least 100 These things need to die! These things need to die! These Even things need to die! These invited to come see the No! These things need to die! With a young girl even being invited- These niggas need- No, no, fuck under the prison! These niggas need to get the iron bowl! The- What- No, the bronze- What is it called? What is- They need this. They need. They, they need this. They need. They need this. They need this. They need to die. They need to no. Needed to come over and see the prisoner, who then took a pin and doodled on her face. By the day seven mark, Junko had been already completely stripped of all of her humanity. She was forced to be naked at all times and was constantly beaten and humiliated. They would shove her into the freezer for hours when they were bored with her only pulling her out when they wanted to assault her again. Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were living in the same house that she was being- And they knew in. about it? His brother did nothing, aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. He's a pussy! I hope that's his old- if, it's, if that's the older brother, he's pussy. His parents were afraid to intervene, as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature first- And y'all let the, their son run the house! They also knew of his association with the Yakuza and feared of their possible retaliation. And most disgustingly, Hold on. they worried about losing their good reputation. Pause. Pause. Right? Let me tell y'all something. Knowing Yakuza law, Yakuza rules, them doing that is a death sentence. All of them are going to be dead. Are going to be dead if the Yakuza found out. They'll probably, they'll, they won't even lose a finger. They will die. The community. After about 10 days of this torture, Junko's body was already starting to fail her. Because of the ongoing, endless beatings, 
So much blood had accumulated in her sinuses that she could no longer breathe through her nose. Her digestive system was also beginning to refuse food and water. If she attempted to eat or drink anything, she would instantly vomit. This also led to severe dehydration. Anytime she would vomit, her attackers would get angry and beat her even further. A vicious cycle that had no end in sight. When the nights got even colder, she was forced to sleep on the balcony of the home in extreme cold temperatures, sometimes near or below freezing. Eventually, one of the men that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her, uh -huh. his brother. Uh-huh, okay. His brother of his ended up informing the police That's about a nigga. what was going on at the Minato house. That's a real nigga! Two officers were soon dispatched to go check things out. Minato's parents came to the door. When the police explained the situation, the parents simply responded that there was no girl in the house. The police took it at face value, thanked them, and left. Without ever bothering to These are the worst police officers people. ever! After 20 days of torture, Junko was rendered completely unable to walk. She had had lighter fluid poured on her legs and set on fire, leaving her with severe burns. Her legs had also been targeted so severely during the beatings that they were left with severe muscle damage. She was unable to grip anything with her hands anymore, as they had been smashed with dumbbells to the point where her bones were crushed and her fingernails were shattered. Some nights later, the attackers got more rowdy than usual and ended up drinking too much. Junko took this as a chance to try to escape. Did she she escape? crawled down the stairs from the bedroom and reached the phone downstairs. She picked up the phone and began to call the police. Did she escape? The phone rang, and an officer picked up. Just as she was about to speak, Hiroshi came up behind her and grabbed the phone from her hands. He put the receiver to his ear and said, I dialed by mistake, hanging up the phone. She was then pulled back into the bedroom. She was in complete terror as she would obviously be severely punished for this. And she was correct. They punished her by holding her down and taunting her by waving a candle's flame all around her. Then they covered her entire body, mainly her legs, in lighter fluid and set her on fire once more. Afterwards, she started convulsing. The boys told everyone that she was faking it and set her on fire once again, only to put it out shortly after. Somehow, she survived. From this point on, she began begging her captors to just kill That's her and God. be done with it. That's God. They wouldn't grant her that favor. After being set on fire, they discovered a new way to torture her. The boys would hold her head against the concrete while the others would jump on it. One can only imagine what kind of pain and damage no, this would have No, oh God, please. After please. about 30 days, Junko was no longer able to urinate properly. She had suffered severe damage to her genitals after they had been burned with cigarette lighters. She also had various foreign objects inserted into her, many sharp and jagged. Even fireworks had been inserted into her. Not they fireworks! All oh, these niggas are evil! No! No, chat, chat, chat. I know somebody who lost their hands due to fireworks. He lost, he lost all his fingers. He lost all his fingers due to fireworks. These niggas are evil. The this is unhumane. to only one orifice, as they were also inserted into her anus, <gasps> mouth, and ears as well. <gasps> she was left with eardrum damage so severe that she was nearly deaf at this point. Her hands and feet were so damaged that she could hardly move. At best, she could crawl. It took her over an hour to crawl to the bathroom. A later report showed that her brain size was greatly reduced by this point in time. Due to her hellish appearance, the boys no longer found her attractive. They used the same strategy again- JUST BECAUSE SHE TOLD A NIGGA NO! THESE NIGGAS ARE FUCKED UP! BRO, I NEED TO HEAR WHAT HAPPENS AFTER WHAT HAPPENS TO THEM! Rape ...another 19-year-old woman while she was on her way home from- THESE home. NIGGAS ARE SERIAL R-WORDS! This is worse than Bill Cosby. This is worse than Diddy. These niggas are just pure evil. They're pure evil. Due 
During these 44 days of hell, Junko Furuta was forced to withstand the most unspeakable torture and suffering that a person can imagine. Some of what was done to her includes being raped many times every single day, day and night, in all orifices. More than a hundred men are believed to have raped her by the end. Sometimes she was raped by up to 12 different attackers in a single day. Constant humiliation. She was forced to be left naked most of the time. Many of the men who raped her also urinated on her. She was forced to pleasure herself in front of the attackers for their entertainment. She was beaten physically every day. She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods, bamboo sticks, and various other objects. Over her body and her head stomped against the ground, face and, 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 and then he, she was held in Minato's house. She had hot wax poured all over her face with a focus on her eyelids. Her eyelids were also burned with cigarettes and cigarette lighters. She was violated with a long list of various objects shoved into all orifices, including, but not limited to, bottles, both broken and unbroken, iron bars, scissors, roasting needles, chicken skewers, and more. She was given only the strict bare minimum of food and water. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. She had fireworks put into all of her orifices, leaving damage and severe burns. She had her left nipple ripped off by a pair of pliers. She would be tied up flat on the floor and had dumbbells dropped all over her body. The drops on her abdomen were so hard that it caused her to lose all control of her bowels. She was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. She was shoved into a freezer and kept there for hours at a time. Her eyelids were burned with hot wax and lighters when she closed her eyes in God fear. rest her soul, bro. Her breasts were stabbed with sewing needles. God needles rest her soul. Left inside. God rest her soul. Her genitals were burned with cigarettes and lighters. Are they still alive, she the people who did that to her? light bulb inserted into her vagina and moved around until it shattered. By the end, she looked like a completely These niggas are sick. Damage. It was These niggas are really sick. Her, her body was severely damaged and crippled, and she smelled as if she were already rotting. These she niggas are sick. She heavily bleeding from her genitals from all of the abuse. She wheezed heavily, struggling to breathe from all of the blood accumulated in her sinuses. On day 40, January 1st, Junko woke up to New Year's Day alone. She spent the day begging to be killed, completely unable to move. Three days later, on the fateful day of the 4th of January, the boys challenged Junko to a game of Mahjong Solitaire and forced her to play. Somehow, even in her condition, she won the game. This infuriated her captors, who treated her to a severe beating with an iron barbell, and then poured lighter fluid all over her arms, her legs, her stomach, and finally her face, dumping lighter fluid even into her eyes. Then they put a candle to her face, igniting it all. She weakly attempted to put out the flames, but didn't have the strength to do so. This final torture lasted for a grueling two hours altogether. Already having been in a horrible condition, Junko went into shock and finally died the following day. <clears throat> Minato's brother called him within 24 hours to inform him that Junko had died. The boys all rushed over to the house in a panic, fearing what would certainly be a life sentence. LIFE! They fear a life sentence after they did all that? They fit the murder. R wording the girl is 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 enough. Torturing her is not worth a life sentence, but murder is what makes you scared? Murder? Bro. Murder? Well, that sentence, the boys started to freak out. But they came up with a plan. The captains then put her body into a 55-gallon oil drum and filled it to the brim with concrete. A small bit of Junko's long hair was poking out the top of the concrete, something they apparently didn't notice. 
They disposed of the barrel at a construction site in Koto, Tokyo. Seeing that place now, you'd never imagine something like this was buried there. There was originally a good chance that the police would never find out who did this. There weren't any clues to go on. Luckily, Hiroshi is a moron. While he was being questioned by the police two weeks later involving their recent gang rape of the unrelated 19-year-old woman, he got confused and thought the police were talking about Junko, as the cases were so similar. And, thinking that one of the other boys must have already confessed, he spilled the beans. He realized his mistake, but it was already too late, and he told the police where they had hid the body. Yes! Joe Ogura had already been arrested for another unrelated sexual assault case. Yes! He was quickly also arrested for Junko's case as well. The other boys were then arrested within the next few days. Yes! Later, the drum was finally opened and the concrete was broke open, revealing Junko's long-deceased body in a nightmare-inducing, horrific condition. Junko's family was notified and told of what happened to her in detail. When her mother heard the details of what was done to her, she fainted. She ended up in a long-term stay in a psychiatric hospital. An autopsy was performed on Junko, revealing the true horror of what had happened to her. Like, I, well, I ain't gonna lie, I really want to cry for her mom, but like, I, I, I Small own, I, I were can't. Found still stuck in her rectal cavity, and it was revealed that she was pregnant, although the damage to her uterus was severe. Her face was so completely mutilated that she had to be identified by her fingerprints. Being that they were juveniles, the court withheld the names of the four captors. But journalists from Shukan Bunshin magazine were able to find out exactly who they were and publish the names of all of them, stating that they were inhuman and therefore didn't deserve human rights. They don't deserve damn Nobody right! Really contested this. As we know, they were Hiroshi Miyano, 18 at the time, Joe Ogura, also 18 at the time, Nobuharu Minato, who was 16 at the time, and Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17. All four of these monsters were caught and sent to trial. During each trial, it was pretty common for onlookers to pass out upon hearing the details of the case. Even with all that they had done, they didn't really show any semblance of remorse. And despite all of this, they received extremely light sentences for such horrific crimes. They were actually still being tried as juveniles, but after much back- They need to be tried as adults! Backlash, they were changed to uh, adult status. <laughs> still, after being upgraded to adult status, they received unbelievably light sentences. Something that, to this day, continues to enrage people who hear about this case. The boys, somehow, were not charged with murder. Instead, they received a charge called causing bodily injury resulting in death. In Japan, the juvenile court system is far more focused on rehabilitation rather than punishment. Death penalty! Death penalty! We need to kill them! We need to kill them now! They need to die now! They need to die now! Kill he killed his mom and got three years? Three years for murder? They need to die now! Now, I need a retrial, no! Usually this means that juveniles will end up getting relatively very low sentences. Hiroshi was sentenced- Bro, if this was 1800 Japan, or the 1940s Japan, these niggas would have been in prison. They, they would have been facing a death sentence right now. No! 20 years in prison. Minato got a 5 to 7 year sentence himself. Watanabe got nine years. Minato got a. Hiroshi was sentenced to twenty years in prison. Minato got a five to seven years. Five. Sentence himself. Watanabe got nine years, and Joe nine? got an eight-year sentence. One sad thing is that these monsters actually received even lower sentences than that at first. They were only increased to the still low amount after an appeal. It was so low that some people even questioned if their Yakuza ties were to blame for this. By the time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Three of them were in jail for less than eight years. 
Hiroshi, the ringleader, was sentenced to 17 years originally. He tried to appeal, but as kind of a fuck you, the judge actually upped his case to 20 years. Mm. The same thing happened to two of the other boys. The second and after seeing Japan. enough, the fourth boy decided not to try to appeal. However, they all ended up getting out long before those sentences were actually Let's take a trip to Japan, And I chap. bet you're wondering if they continued to commit crimes after they got out of jail. Well, let's see. After Nobuhara Minato got out of jail, he changed his first name to Shinji. We don't give a fuck. For obvious reasons. We don't give a fuck, Shinji, In nigga. In 2006, he got married to a woman from Romania and had a daughter together. Mm -hmm. Let's take a trip to Japan. And let's take a trip to Japan, chap. Where's Assuming my fucking Hellcat? Scammer get scammed. Ended up with custody of the child. That's what? Minato couldn't stay away from murder for too long. He was eventually arrested again for the attempted murder of a businessman. Uh -huh. The man had noticed Minato staring at him, to which he asked, What do you Leave. Minato came over and punched the man. Wait, is the this in Romania? His car and a fight ensued. It escalated to the point that Minato took out a baton and beat him severely. As the victim tried to get back into his car, Minato slashed his neck with a knife he had hidden. The police were called at some point and they rushed to aid the victim. In the chaos, Minato escaped. He was soon caught and arrested. He How you been, attempted heads? murder, saying he only intended to beat the man. The case is ongoing. Joe Ogura was released in August of 1999. He also ended up changing his name to Joe Kamisaku. Ah. He actually had the gall to brag about his role in the kidnap and torture. Ah. His father had vowed to give their entire life savings to Junko's family out of shame. Ah. But Joe ended up taking this money and using it for himself to live a fairly extravagant lifestyle. Ah. Joe's mother wasn't much better, as she actually vandalized Junko's grave, saying that it was Junko who ruined her son's life. Joe actually managed to find no 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 your son couldn't take no <laughs> there's pussy everywhere there's pussy everywhere just because one person told you no you could have just went on bro like 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 pussy is everywhere you could have went to a different country some women to date him he ended up marrying a chinese woman but the marriage didn't last too long that's what they get afterwards he started dating another woman he went back to prison in July 2004 for seven years for beating a guy he thought was seven luring years? his girlfriend away from him. He had kidnapped and beaten the man for four hours. Uh -huh. He proudly told the victim that he had killed before and would do it again. Uh -huh. He was sentenced to four years in prison. Four years? But in 2009, he was once again free. And he is free to this day. Okay. The okay. Two of them are free. Two of them are free. Two of them are free. We need to go and we need to go to Japan. Leader Hiroshi Miyano went right back into his previous gang activity immediately after being released from prison. He was arrested for fraud at some point after fraud? this, but didn't see jail time for it. Right now, it seems that he's living a fairly normal life. Some might even say a good life. He is a regular patron at a local kickboxing gym and appears to have a normal social life. Hmm. As of now, Yasushi Watanabe is the only one of the four boys who hasn't been arrested since. Mm. Because of that, it's not really known what he's been up to. Since we need to go to Japan, right? We go to Japan. We, or we, we look, look, this is the plan. This is the plan. It might sound fucked up. We need to go to Japan with four buff <laughs> No s <laughs> Right? Right? Since the investigation first started, the police have been able to get DNA from the sperm and pubic hairs found in evidence to link several more criminals to the crime, including two men named Koichi Ihara and Tetsuo Nakamura, both of whom were arrested, and there are probably many others who have not been revealed to the public. It is unknown if they will all face any sort of charges. That shit fucked up. That shit's f bro. No, we. So there it is. The worst. We case need to I've spin back. Of. I get this question a lot, and it's like, like, and like, in all seriousness, no joke, no joke. We need to get. We need to. These niggas need to get. They need to get. Like I.
We need to start a petition. They need to get killed, chat. There are a couple of we others. We need to start a petition for close, this. But they are it's really hard to top something like this. I mean, you've got the brutality, the length, the scale. I mean, just so asking if you like this video seems a little bit fucked up. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like. It helps me out. We, they need Although, a retrial, like, chat. This video is going to really be pushed, but yeah. If you like they need a like retrial. This, uh, be sure to subscribe. I, I do a lot of it. And if you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page that's linked in the description. Speaking of which, shout out to my top patrons. David McLaughlin.